Hey guys, so this is the next video for Scott Evans. I promised you to talk about his centers in his human design chart and that's what I'm gonna do today. Okay, um, if you didn't watch the first video, please go back and do it because it explains a lot about his type, about his profile um, and about his authority in his human design. Um, which is kind of basic knowledge about human design. If you've never heard of it, you might want to get a bit informed about it first. Um, and you will want to get your own chart. Um, I put down below a link into the description where you can get your own chart for free. Just click on it, put in your data, and then be ready to be amazed. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Scott Evans's centers in his design which um, will tell a lot about um, how he feels, how he reacts to things, about his um, strategies and about well basically his life. So why don't we get started? Maybe I should first explain to you that um, we have nine centers in the chart that you see right now next to me. So the centers are either defined when there's a color in it or undefined white. If a center is defined, all the aspects it stands for are inherent in you and they are stable. So you could say that in these centers you will always find your true self and in the centers that are not defined you will always find the people and surroundings you are with. Most of all if they are defined um, and you're not. We it's meant in a way that we condition each other in an energetic way, not in a psychological way, but in an energetic way um, when we spend time together, even when we're only in a supermarket queue or on a party. Um, for example, if, you, if you're standing in a supermarket queue right behind someone who's really angry, you can just tell they are, <laughs> even though they might not be talking or they don't have maybe an angry pose, but you just know because you just keep your distance. That's energetical conditioning. So of course this condition, like if it takes place only for a few minutes, is not as influential as the conditioning through our parents or our siblings or partners or kids that last for years. So let's go through the nine centers in your chart, Scott, and see what we find. The center of on top, like the one high, is the head center. Your head, Scott, is undefined, meaning that you're open to all sorts of inspiration that comes to your head at all times. Wherever you go and whomever you meet, you'll be inspired by others um, if they are defined in their head. And you can easily jump onto like big ideas that people have as you, especially with an emotional authority, are easy to delight. You long for inspiration in this way and therefore you always search for people worth your adoration. There's this deep longing in us, like I share the open head center with you, um, to meet people and be stimulated in a cognitive and in a mental way by them and by their visions and their ideas. So you need to make sure that the people you surround yourself with don't confuse you with their thoughts and plans because you'll be easily distracted by taking this over and not realizing it's not yours. So when you're not aware of this, you may notice that you lose focus easily, become lost or overwhelmed and make decisions from doubt, confusion or wanting to understand the reasons for your thoughts. Why are they not really your thoughts? <laughs> you're not responsible for everyone's problems or dreams. If you're not aware of this and you try to release the pressure coming through solving other people's problems through actions, you will experience your lower self, which is frustration. And you know what comes after frustration? Just burn it down. Use your open head center in a wise way. Enjoy the inspiration through others and yet be clear that you'll always find them and their ideas and their plans in your head. You, Scott, don't even have a single gate in the center activated, which means on an even deeper level, it means n not knowing what to focus on or 
not knowing what is really important to you is a strong theme when you're not following your strategies such as mindfulness, cultivating stillness, practicing meditation to get into emotional clarity. It's crucial for you to master being aware of what's in your head and who starts your thinking. And it's also important for you never to decide or draw conclusions from ideas that just came up in your head. The moment you do that, your actions come from a very deeply conditioned place, energetically conditioned by others, and you cannot live your unique, unique potential, which is of course the goal, because what else would human design be for? What you decide then out of these moods, out of, out of these first thoughts has nothing to do with what really is in you. And when you are aware of these things, you have an ability to develop wisdom about the variety of mental pressures that you find in life and around yourself. Because you tend to like amplify the confusion, the doubts and the pressure to know there is an opportunity to cultivate wisdom through the exploration of these ideas and those inspirations coming from everywhere. It can sometimes feel like war in your head when there's so much going on. And just try to be open to the wonder of the unknown and of the wonder of the uncertain. That's really healthy for you. When you follow your strategy and your authority, just a little reminder, your strategy and your authority is reacting and waiting for your moment of truth and your authority is deciding from emotional clarity. Then you won't act on mental pressure or take on the pressure of other people's need for answers, which can be exhausting. You can just simply enjoy the pressure of wanting to know more without becoming identified with it or make decisions from it. This head center, interestingly enough, is exactly the same head center your brother Chris has with no activated gates or channels in it. And about the things that I just described, you both should be able to connect on and understand each other in this very well, because you share the same needs here. The center below is the ashna or the mind, and it's undefined. You could call it the I love the, the word of hub of mental awareness in your chart. Um, it's undefined, as I already said, meaning you can be present and absent in the moment at the same time. Your mind is for communication, not for action. It's the place of researching, investigation, analysis, and categorization, all things that have a basis in seeing and hearing the world around you. Meditation and clearing your head comes easier to you than it does to me. For example, I have a defined mind. You are someone who does not have a consistent way of conceptualizing and you take in information like a sponge. With an open mind, you are fluid and adaptable in your mental processes and you have the potential to be highly intelligent. You're apt to forget things though that are not of immediate importance for you which others might take way more personal than they'd have to. This has nothing to do with you not appreciating them but rather your skills, I mean your profile six, that's rather your skill to be aware of what is really needed to be remembered and what isn't. Be sure to communicate this. Having an undefined mind doesn't have anything to do with your lacking intelligence or something because Albert Einstein had an undefined head center, mind center as well. And his open mind allowed him to keep like a distant objectivity and an overview on obstacles in physics that allowed him to bring sense into a huge amount of information. And I mean, today we all know what we owe him, right? When you're not following your strategy and authority, you may notice that you are uneasy with your uncertainty of thought or the unreliable way your mind conceptualizes because it constantly changes, defined through the people around you. You may tend to compensate by being overly fixed with your opinions, insights and ideas, and you might recognize the behavior of making decisions that try to convince others or yourself that you are smart or certain of something and not understanding or realizing like the public truth, getting things wrong and being exposed publicly for your error or inability can be a huge fear and may result in you making conceptually defensive decisions. 
it's probable that you develop the adaptive strategy of attempting to be intellectually consistent to avoid being humiliated. If this proves to be true with you, Scott, you're going to react with frustration, mostly directed towards yourself. Perfectionism in this, um, knowing better, <laughs> be better informed, can break your neck from self-fulfillment. Here it is so precious for you to develop something like a more vulnerable, more authentic way and being okay with not knowing, using the sentence, I'm not completely sure, uh, let me check my notes or let me do some research, let me come back to you then. This is perfectly fine. People will, re will respect you for it. And it's so much better than presenting an answer that you're not too certain of and then becoming angry or frustrated if the story doesn't work out. Being vulnerable in things we are not certain of is so important because perfectionism here is one of the armors against vulnerability. We use it as a like um, as a mechanism in order to not be judged or criticized, to not be seen and what we might not be perfect in. But what it really does is keeping us very busy stressing ourselves and being unauthentic and trying to, to prevent people from seeing us we keep them distant. And if we don't embrace not knowing in certain areas, and if we think if we make mistakes, we are a failure, we develop stress and anxiety and decide to be separated through our flaws and not united in them. And let me invite just every one of you who's watching this now, if you're dealing with perfectionism, just try to communicate. We love, everybody loves people who show themselves vulnerable and who are less likely, I mean, to be perfect because we're not going to hurt you for it. We're going to love you for it. So let's just unite in our not knowing, not, not being perfect in things. And let's be united in the deriving shame from this instead of being separated through it. People with a defined mind may sometimes easily confuse you as you overtake the input into your head and suddenly your head becomes loud and it's hard for you to keep calm. Again, here you chose being alone as no one then brings you into the situation. People with this center undefined have the gift to solve other people's problems because of their ability to see the structure and see through the problems of others like from a perspective higher above. But that doesn't mean again that you're responsible to do this. You can also enter a room and immediately hear what people are grappling with at this moment. People probably often have told you that they feel extremely understood by you and that you always seem to know what they think, which makes socializing easy for you, but also people pleasing, which is quite toxic behavior. And you probably know what people like you to say or do. And in case of doubt, just follow the strategy instead of being unauthentic. Um, catch yourself doing this. Give yourself a stop. Give yourself a breather and then choose again. This center, by the way, you do again share with your brother, which is not surprising. You do share a few features. <laughs> the next center that you again share is the defined throat. You're able to express your emotions as your throat is only connected to one other center, your emotional center. Whatever the defined throat is connected to, we are able to express. And here we can see the perfect design for an actor. You're just so good in delivering and expressing emotions because through your defined emotional center, you feel them so deeply. And expressing your emotions doesn't only take place through language. If you have a defined throat center, you'll have a consistent and reliable way of communicating and acting or doing things. And with a defined throat, so interesting, I think, your voice has the constant same tone and self-confidence. However, you can speak and act too readily or inappropriately, talk too much and consequently lack impact when not being aware of how you work and function and when wanting to impress or play a role rather than show up as yourself. You have the urge to also express your emotion, emotions through creative actions such as art and music. You find perfection and delight if this works for you.
With your defined throat, you're designed to tell extraordinary tales, reveal your personal opinions and learnings, show decisive and great leadership, which is a big thing in your profile 6.2, and profound outcomes. People without an undefined throat may often feel the urge to like keep showering you with their words as they unconsciously know that you can give them a voice. Learn how to set boundaries here. Learn how to say no. Learn how to say that just doesn't work for me. It's not my fault. It's not your fault, but it doesn't work for me. You're not responsible for giving a voice to everyone, solving all problems just because you can or helping others into their greatness. People love to hear you speak. And having watched a few interviews with you and your brother together, it's so funny to see he, as the manifester with the strategy initiating, is always the one to answer first. And whenever you get an impulse or get invited to use your strategy of reaction and you add your opinion, it's like they have to just say your name or give you an impulse so in order for you to react which is your strategy reacting right so this is kind of interesting i think your g center or self center is defined which is the first major difference in the centers compared to your brother's sentence why throughout his life he will continue asking himself who am I? Followed by all the stress and anxiety this insecureness brings with it. For you, the answer to this question is quite clear. You know who you are and you know where your journey will bring you. A certain security in the big questions of life lies within you, which makes you a stable element for people without a defined self center like Chris or me. It's always in your interest to live and develop your best self though not following the compass of others as to who this best self is, but just your own. You're never led far astray from your path through life. And if that should happen on rare occasions, you will get frustrated by it very quickly and find back on your path. People without a defined G-Center may feel your stability here and cling onto you to guide them back into their path, which is, of course, never your responsibility or your task. You decide who you want to guide to the happiness, whom to lend your stability and your time. This center gave you the clear knowing about your sexual identity and the knowledge about how important it would be to come out and live this life openly because there never really was a question about who you were. It was just about acknowledging it and about thinking about when, when's the right time to go public with it which your brother resolved for you, I guess. He's a manifester. He came to solve problems for others most of the time, uninvited though, which might just be a huge thing for him to learn. And unconsciously too. I think that happened, didn't happen on purpose. So the center right next to the self center is your heart center or ego. This is the center of willpower. And in your chart, it's undefined, which makes you one of those people I love a lot for their true humbleness. 90% of humanity has this open center, by the way. It means that the strength of your will is not always apparent and you find a consistent urge to prove yourself. Not designed to make and keep promises, you can be deeply conditioned and thus deeply unhappy to live up to expectations of yourself and others. People may often have asked you, like, what do you want from life? What are your plans now? What's going to happen next? And that's just not a good answer for you. Your competitiveness lies in this, as undefined egos tend to want to identify through the things they achieve. You already realize that you need to uncouple your self-esteem from comparing the results of others with your own results. Mostly in this job. <laughs> Your competitiveness finds a good setting in video games, though you should never challenge me in Mario Kart. Choose your enemies wisely, they say. The deep need of your undefined ego to appear worthy can cause quite troublesome adaptive strategies like overachieving or exaggerated words and actions to create self-importance. Accepting less of something because of a deep feeling of inadequacy inadequacy can just somebody tell me how you say this word hmm self-deficiency and worthlessness originating from continually 
failing to meet expectations can also be the result. Just remember, you don't have to prove anything to anyone. Be aware that you are inherently worthy because you are. And that your design in itself is perfect exactly the way it is. You just need to follow your strategy and authority. An open ego makes you a very generous person. You don't collect materialistic things just for possessing them. And you find peace and happiness in moments and people, not in things. This is what many people don't feel or live themselves. And I'm very sure by now you're surrounded by people who feel the same or live the same, which is very important for you. You're like five years older than me, I think. <laughs> and by now you've had like five more years to gain wisdom in these fields. But the part with comparing oneself to others is, I guess, that's like the root and the, the guarantee for unhappiness. We compare out of our need for safety to somehow try to find out where we stand and whether we're good enough and worthy to be part, part of the tribe, basically, which is evolutionary logic, but it's like the limbic system in our brains not realizing that today's world doesn't mean exile and death <laughs> when someone doesn't like or agree with you. Belonging is in our DNA and it's our deepest fear of not belonging. So. We compare to make sure we're good enough to be part of the group, the family, whatever. And that just makes us sick and anxious. So just drop that shit. <laughs> we love you and your dirty, shamey self with all your flaws and all your mistakes. You just need to be brave enough to show them to the people who earned it. We're just gonna love you more for it. So let's go on to the sacral center. In every generator or manifesting generator's chart, the sacral center needs to be defined. That's where your consistent life force comes from. Your gut feeling is at home in this center. And um, I explained to you like the noises that your sacral center makes um, as a reaction to an impulse in the first video. So I won't repeat this here. A tragedy that comes with a defined sacral center is that people having this oftentimes walk through their life working their asses off while not being appreciated enough for it. And as a result to this, they try harder. Mostly if they live next to manifestors, such as Chris, to whom everything seems to just come so easily, this might be a huge source for frustration. You're designed to be a powerhouse god, and he isn't. And you love working hard in your job and the things you love. So in the next video, um, we'll be taking a look at your gates and channels to find your talents and potentials and your very individual se self. Um, and I think we might even manage to inspire you where to put in your energies to be more appreciated if you feel like that's something you would like. As it's so important that you only get engaged in things you're really passionate about. If you get into something because of the prestige or because others do it or accept you to do it um, or talk you in, that's probably even worse, you'll quickly get bored and frustrated and resentful towards the world and yourself as your natural instinct is to keep it going. Feel free and remind yourself to quit whenever you find yourself in such a position. When your moment of truth says no, it's a no. You can quit whenever you like. Your sacred center and your moment of truth will tell you what to do or not to do. With a defined sacred center, sexuality is a motor for you. This means that you are designed to have the potential for a lifelong fulfilling sexual life given that you connect with the right person. Here you need to use your discipline and your discrimination skills to find out who that is. And if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. That should be a good motto in choosing a partner for everyone, I think. If it's not a hell yes, it's a no. Go for your no's. Because whatever we don't, we don't literally say no to, we say yes to. And that's a lot of shit. So say no if it's not a hell yes. Your emotional center. Scott is defined, which I already addressed a few times, also when I talked about your authority. Basically, you're a person with a lot of deep feelings, waiting out deep uncertainties and emotional inconsistencies until you are as clear as possible 
when there's no emotional charge around the decision anymore before moving forward is correct for you. We already talked about your emotional waves being able to put you into heaven and get you down to hell in a heartbeat. And how do we meant that? We meant that by meditating and disidentifying with our feelings. Your emotional system is home to the delights of feelings, such as sensitivity, desires, passion, romance, the drive for sex, for food and for spirit consciousness. In the battlefield of dealing with emotions, there are those who think they feel too much and those who think they don't feel enough. With my clients, that's mostly generators. And we as emotional authorities, we may learn to not feel everything as deep as it comes to protect ourselves and others from us. We may develop the belief that we're too much, that people don't get us, can't follow us, um, won't meet us in the depth of our feelings. That's ringing a bell? Probably yes. We absolutely have to learn how to not always ride the wave and most importantly, so I'll repeat it again, not to make decisions out of these waves because they're never true. They're never your true, true core of feelings. You do have three gates activated in your defined emotional center and without diving too deep into the gates as the next video will be all about them and all about your channels, we need to say that these three gates can bring emotional uncertainty or nervousness, meaning fears regarding personal interactions that can easily cause anxiety, and anxiety panic attacks and a tendency to avoid people. And these gates are all unconsciously activated, so you're not really aware of it, just of the outcome. Just wait for my next video to explain this in depth. What's also kind of interesting, again, in your job as an actor is that you don't only feel strongly, but you influence your surroundings by doing so. Your emotions are contagious, and so they influence your audience as much as they support your fellow actors who are undefined in their emotional center. And as you can see, this goes further than one could imagine. Um, I love us being able to connect to others and to our audience through this emotional wave, um, coming through words, through actions, through whatever. And what's really important for me again, just out of my personal story, is that it's not about explaining or controlling your emotions release them when and how it feels correct for you maybe in a creative way and from more clarity than you have when being on the wave your splenic center is undefined again and this is the center governing the primal awareness fundamental to your survival call it intuition or gut instinct the spontaneous knowing here is worthy of respect the splenic center is home to your immune system health values and well-being, ensuring the intelligence to protect yourself. Your splenic center enables your survival through an alertness to fears that are designed to keep you safe. Let me remind you here that this center being undefined doesn't mean you don't have that or you have less. Just what's active here is not yours, but energetically conditioned by your surrounding. Let me um, check. Yes. You're very sensitive to substances such as meds and also sensitive about your health and how your body feels. Being undefined here and not finding yourself but your surrounding in this center means that whenever you're confronted with fear and anxiety, you have no possibility of letting it bounce off of you. You'll always absorb and live, live it out as if it was yours, if it becomes too dense. So typical thoughts of an undefined spleen are, I can't say that because it might upset someone and they might leave me or I can help them change. Perhaps maybe therapy could help them. One important thing that you should know is that other people with a defined spleen, like me, for example, we are reacting with fear to danger that we feel through our intuition. The spleen is for intuition, as I already said. Whereas you with an undefined splenic center, you're likely to give room to fears that have no reason to be there, such as anxiety and panic attacks. They come from information in your surrounding and they are not yours inherently, so please keep that in mind. If the people surrounding you have these fears, they transfer over to you and you just seem to not always know where they come from, which sucks. 
So let's go to the last center, the root center. You've got an open root like I do, unlike Chris does. And that's a big difference in you two. So he's the adventurer, though the scared one. <laughs> Whereas we are the relaxed ones, more stable ones, mostly when we're alone with just ourselves. We don't feel the pressure we usually feel when in public and in stress. And you just need to know your root center is not designed to cope with stress too well. So if you surround yourself with people with a defined root center, such as your brother, who are in and under stress, that just brings you out of your mind. So whenever that happens, you just need to leave <laughs> the room <laughs> or the house, the place. Good for both of you, like you and your brother, that usually your stability brings him down quickly and it's not the other way around. So whenever you feel stressed, you bought into a project surrounding, or I mean, surrounding yourself with a person that's not aligned to you, that had caused a stress in you because it was your decision and your moment of truth comes saying it wasn't the right decision. So expectations of others towards us stress us and we like procrastinating things only for this reason because we need the stress deadline gives us. Um, <laughs> uh, and then manage stuff last minute, which is very typical for us. And it's not wrong. It's just another way of dealing with it, I like to say. That's because we don't have the constant adrenaline in us that defined root-centered people have. We build it up like this, like the last minute thing. We just build the adrenaline up so we can just hand in stuff in time. Being calm can come natural to you. Though maybe not as naturally as if you were a manifester or a projector with an undefined root. Whenever your body calms down, your head gets activated. Powerhouse, remember? And then you have the head stuff going on. So, I hope following me through these centers kind of gave you aha moments. Because um, I think... Through these videos, we're just putting together puzzle piece after puzzle piece. And you will probably, Scott, find yourself in all of these pieces saying, Ah, oh, look, um, I've known this and that was unconscious. So, but, but it does make sense in a way now for me. So these were the centers today. And in the third video coming next week, I will talk about your channels and your gates. As well as your purpose in life, your incarnation cross. Can't wait until next week. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't done it yet, go get your chart, check your human design. Maybe you're a manifesto or a manifesting generator. Then by this time I have already, I think there are some videos for you that might interest you. Check your centers with the videos about the centers that I did for Chris or Scott so far. If you're watching this later, there will probably be a lot more videos where you can choose from um, the person that matches your design most. Um, I do hope you have the best day ever and um, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.